Hello everyone, I'm Dex here, welcome to episode 147 of Machine to Let's Play. So as you can see in the previous episode, I pretty much finally completed my Galgadorian uh, nether mining drill project thingy, whatever. Um, and as you can see, I started mining in the nether. Uh, you can go ahead and watch the previous episode in case you missed it to see what's exactly going on. So it's gonna go ahead and start mining. Now I did encounter some problems regarding potentially issues with the chunk loading mechanism, although there is a chunk, mo a chunk loading module on it. It still sometimes don't work. And there is also this thing, which I have two gates here, uh, which is a little bit complicated, but you, again, if in case you missed the previous episode, go ahead and watch it. Uh, there is a very good explanation why it's there. Anyway, with that project done, uh, which basically also created all the sub-projects of all my monster farms and everything, um, I finally have a room for a new project. So, actually, I'd like to do one thing before uh, continuing any further. I received this idea, actually quite some time ago, but I kept forgetting about it, which was in my ender farm, I could actually do something about them. I could do something about all the excess endermen that keep spawning and standing on the edge. Now, this is pretty much unavoidable because I'm using water here. It was an unavoidable, unavoidable thing that to me, to, that Enderman will simply stand here and not die. However, I actually received this idea and forgot about it, which is I can go ahead and actually use Zycraft uh, crystals to take care of that. So if I come here and actually I have <laughs> 12,000 of those uh, crystals, quartz crystals, uh, Sorin actually gave them a property uh, at some point which made them potentially useful. Like cactuses, when they're placed in the world, if you stand near them or on top of them, I think, okay, maybe then only when you're standing near them, they damage you. So this is, you can, uh, I guess only when you're standing near them. If they are placed like this, then, yeah, only when you stand near them, I guess. Uh, it's still useful. I can actually go ahead and place those on that edge of the trap and in theory it should make Enderman kind of less likely to be standing here. So what I'm going to do is simply fill this up with those crystals and I'm going to give it a try by turn by taking some Ender Pearls out because this trap is automatically turned off when I have enough Ender Pearls. I'm going to take some out C. see uh, if it changes, it damages me, it should also damage them. And obviously since they have nowhere to teleport to when they take damage, they'll simply take damage in here and die, or teleport into the water, or whatever. They might teleport right onto the crystals themselves, like you just saw, but and which doesn't seem to make you take any damage, but still uh, should do something. Uh, let's check it out. Let's try and take some ender pearls out. So come here and steal a lot of ender pearls. Okay, and if I come back to my uh, my my farm's age, you can see that the ones in the water obviously are taking damage. Yeah, and when they land kind of near the crystals, they get damaged. However, if they teleport directly on top of it, they don't exactly take damage. But it's still better than nothing. It still kind of imp improves a little bit uh, on the design. A little bit, not very much, but a little bit. Okay, so let's turn it off by dumping all those enterprises in here. Which will be collected and eventually turn off the farm. And yeah, okay, so th that's that. Um... Nothing too big. Actually, also a small change I'd like to apply to here and actually to another place is replace oh, replace the collection f using an ender chest to actually using a tesseract. Uh, I'm using uh, ender chests both here and in my wither skeleton farm, and I'm, they're actually connected to this chest, and I don't want it. I want it to be connected to the tesseract because it's uh, automatic collection. There is no need for sorting and I can avoid sort, uh, let's do that. So, with our skeleton skulls, bones, and ender pearls could be removed from that sorting machine, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's uh, get uh, item test racks, I'm gonna need two more. So let's auto craft an additional one. Apparently I can just do that. 
and make my way uh, to the ender farm H and replace that chest right here with a tesseract though I think I might need uh, a relay is this a relay or a transposer yeah that's a transposer I'm gonna need a relay to interface with the tesseract I think so let's get one Really, let's get one. I'm gonna need one more for the other farm as well. Why is it taking so long? It shouldn't be taking so long. Okay, so place it right here and change the rotation this and place an item tesseract which will be sending only the air around you suddenly becomes suffused with strange energies what okay anyway uh, set the transport mode to send only, it will be on the sorting network, so any item goes through will go into my sorting machine network, and that's pretty much it. So now instead of sending items into the uh, sorting ender chest, it will go directly into the system, so I can move this out of here, and also those pearls, which kept clogging this chest, and same uh, same thing I can actually also apply to my Wither Skulls farm and replace again that ender chest with a relay. So this goes away and this also goes away. Uh, okay this has to stay here so this changes into a relay and this is a Tesseract. Sending only on the sorting network. So now I can also remove bones and skeleton skulls from the sorting machine, giving me a little bit more room to use to place future things in here if that will ever ever be the case. However, I don't really see it very likely, but uh, you never know. Okay, so that's uh, the small thing that I wanted to change now. Uh, let's actually get to my next project. So this is actually an idea I got uh, from a private message on YouTube by uh, BJ's2000. Uh, which gave me a very nice idea for kind of a fun project, which uh, is more like something... I don't know if it actually will have a use in the future for me, but it's actually a lot more fun because it lets you explore all the different things in Feed the Beast. And that is to create a warehouse which will contain every type of liquid which is available in Feed the Beast in, uh, in a container. Now, to actually check all the types of liquids available, I can actually come here to a liquid transposer, click on the recipes, and you can see to pretty much cover every type of liquid which is available. So we've got lava, water, creosote oil, oil, fuel, acid, I have no clue how to get acid, poison, liquid nitrogen, uh, water again, biomass, biofuel, seed oil, so on and so forth. There is a ton of those liquids and some of them I've actually used already, so I have some sort of a crafting method to get them. Uh, some of them I've never seen before, and some of them I even have no clue how to get started. Uh, so again, it will be kind of a fun project, which will let me explore all the different aspects of Feed the Beast, I think. Uh, ha let me take a look at every different liquid and how it can be used. And my design principle will be that that small warehouse will contain uh, con will have a container of every type of liquid which will also be automatically restocked and refilled when necessary meaning those contain containers won't be just for show they could actually turn into something practical whenever I need something so uh, the design I'm thinking to go for will be using Zycraft tanks and since Zycraft tanks actually have um, size limitation to them. You know what, actually, I might actually go for Railcraft tanks with this one. Uh, with these tanks. Although to craft them, 
I may need the rolling machine, which I don't really like. Uh, you know what? No. Let's go for Zycraft tanks. So, actually, I'm going to come up with the number of liquids available. Or roughly estimate. Now, if I look at the transposer recipes page, there are 58, 58 pages with every page having two liquids. However, there are a lot of duplicates here. A lot of liquids appear more than once, even more than twice, and even more than that. So, <clears throat> I'm going to roughly assume how many I have, or simply have it modularly expandable, which is probably what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and start making that warehouse. I think I'm going to go for uh, Zycraft blocks for the design. Let's go for the white blocks, I think. Uh, these blocks, I like the way they look. Or let's go for something more fancy. Uh, we got the light Zycorda plate, which looks kind of nice. We've got the Zycorium shield. Zycorda shield. We've got the platform. I like the way the platform looks, I think. Let's take a look at that. So, aluminum, uh, light zycoridite, and iron. So, let's take a look on how that looks. So, that, that, and that. Let's make it once. And see how that looks in the world. Um, yeah, I guess it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make uh, a very large supply of that. I think I'm going to go and make my giant warehouse roughly over here at my uh, small desert area nearby, my house. And of course it's going to be modularly expandable, so that will be expanded in, any, in some direction eventually. And of course also connected to the rest of my uh, network. So this is why I'm placing it relatively close, so I can connect it to my applied logistics network. I'm actually considering maybe placing it someplace else. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to place it in the middle of the, that desert. So let's actually quickly integrate crafting those plates. Um, or maybe... Light Zycorium block... No, let, let's go for that... Uh, uh, that Zycorium platform. Okay, so let's integrate the recipe into uh, my Applied Logistics because I'm cra going to craft a lot of those. So add a blank pattern. That will craft it. So this in the middle, this and this, encode that, and probably gonna need another one of those wireless um, planet logistics thingies, the interface and the actual upgrades, the wireless access point. You know what, I'm also gonna add those two recipes quickly off screen, so bear it back. Okay, so there you go. Just quickly added also the two wireless uh, components of Applied Logistics, the actual wireless access point and also the upgrades. So I'm going to go ahead and add both of them. Uh, I'm going to create 16 of those and one of that access point. And the reason I'm going to do that, and also again, I'm going to make sure that this is linked, even though sometimes it breaks. The reason I'm going to do that is just so I can uh, easily get more of those platforms whenever I need them by simply, re say, replace this block with the wireless access point. So it's relatively close to that area right here. So now I can access this and get a bunch of those platforms. Which are crafted relatively quickly because it's simply a crafting recipe. There is no processing involved. Okay, so that uh, is going to be now a very quick uh, cut, because there's simply going to be a bunch of uh, block placement right now, nothing too fancy. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, building that place, and I'll be right back when it's finished. Okay, I started doing this, and you know what, I changed my mind. Uh, I'm going to use Buildcraft to do this. I'm going to use something for Buildcraft which actually is designed to do this. And I forgot the name of the block. Um, I think I'm going to need uh, the builder, or the filler. No, I'm going to filler, I believe. Uh, let's uh, just make sure. Yeah, this is not that. This is not that. No, I'm going to need <coughs> the Billcraft builder, uh, the Billcraft filler. That's a specific block that's going to be doing what exactly what I'm going to do. Because I'm going to build such a large place, you can see I started placing it down, but actually I want to even make it even larger. I'm going to go ahead and do this automatically using Buildcraft. It's going to be very useful and helpful for me. Just going to quickly slip and get started building it. Uh, if you don't know the filler, 
Uh, it's actually have a couple of uses, but one of them is what I'm going to use it for. So uh, let's go ahead and start crafting it. I'm going to need some gold gears, uh, dandelion yellow, basically some yellow, some black, landmark chest and all that. Uh, let's go and create uh, all the gears. And I think it actually will be also a good time to add all the different gears to my uh, Applied Energy 6 network. I don't think I have them yet. Well, I don't have them yet. And you know what? There is no reason why not to do it. So again, something I'm going to quickly do off screen and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did all the gears. I'm even, even going to add uh, the diamond gear for good measure because everybody likes diamonds. So also a diamond gear. And I'm going to go ahead and actually craft all of those gears that I need. So I've got one gold. I'm going to need one more. Uh, one more gold. So there we go. And except for that, I'm also going to need uh, for the filler then a lion yellow, ink sacks, landmarks, crafting tables, and uh, chests. So let's get uh, one chest and also one crafting table and ink sacks and some dandelion yellow ink sacks and then the lion yellow and also some landmarks actually gonna need the landmarks as well to actually set it up so filler build and to use it i'm gonna need some bricks and i think some glass as well uh, some glass okay and actually, I'm going to need an energy tester act to power it. I'm going to connect it to my already existing network, of course. So, like every buildcraft machine, it requires buildcraft energy. So, there's that. Okay, so I'm going to quickly replace some of those blocks. So, this. And this. And this. And let's make it... Uh, Let's say one, whoops, one, two, three, four, uh, five blocks high. So this. And right click all of those uh, markers, place the filler. Okay. And let's collect all those landmarks. They're precious to me. Just, I'm too lazy, I don't want to craft new ones. Okay, and now you set the mode of which, how exactly it's going to fill. Now it looks like a recipe, but it's not exactly a recipe. So I want a setup that will make kind of a hollow shape with the innards basically emptied. Okay, so there is no need for glass, you just need this shape. Uh, you place the material which you want to use, and obviously I'm going to use those platforms. And you simply give it energy. So it's going to be on my Buildcraft energy, it's going to be receiving and this should start doing, you can see it's already doing a lot of work and I think it's actually just expanded all the platforms that I have here. Yeah, I'm going to do a lot more platforms. So let's get uh, a very large amount of them. It's going to use any block you place in there. Basically any block it treats as the, as the building material, it doesn't care which type of block is it. It's simply going to use it without asking any questions. Oops. And so they're simply going to dump them in here and you can see this is pretty much what the filler can do. Now obviously I have very uh, large supply of energy, so this is why it's being so fast. It's it, it's not supposed it, it can potentially not be that fast, but since I have so much energy available, such large reserves, uh, it looks like this. But yeah, but but this is why uh, I showed you guys how to do this because uh, it kind of saved me a lot of time right now instead of uh, doing all of this manually. So it's gonna quickly craft all of this for me very quickly, very conveniently and it's going to complete the roof which I may replace later with some sort of sunroof or whatever but for the time being let's complete it going to do even more those platform ok, I think that will be enough worst case scenario I'm just going to have some spare some extra platform blocks, uh, dump them in here, and we're done. 
and I have 38 spare. Okay. So once it's finished, simply break it, and there you go. You get your bricks back to for future patterns, and I'm gonna take away this tesseract. I don't need it here anymore. And this is now available. I think this is the entrance. Yep. And it looks like this. I may want. I may would have gone for one block higher, actually. You know. No, 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 let's go like this. Okay, why does it feel like the light levels are... No, the, the, this is supposed to be completely dark. Yeah, I can see with, on my tool it's supposed to be completely dark, although it doesn't really feel very dark. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I think, use the inverted lamps from uh, that I used in my farm, actually. Do I have the recipe? Yeah, I do. Uh... Let's create 30. I think 30 actually won't be enough even. So I want to have a constant light always available uh, from from the I think the top, yeah. So I'm gonna add some inverted lamps to the top of the room. And this will be expandable because I can simply break this uh, f this wall right here and go back that way or even go back that way or whatever direction. So it's going to be just one giant uh, prism full with tanks and containers. Uh, should get my lamps already. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to add and find some sort of shape which I'm pleased with to place all those lamps and I'll be right back. Okay, so just about to complete uh, placing all the lamps, I decided to go for something that looks like this. Uh, on the inside, I have... Ooh, what's this? I don't know, it looks strange. It looks strange, right? Why does it look like this? I don't know, maybe it's because of the difference in the light. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> it looks... It looks... I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I decided to go for something like this, since on the inside I have 13 blocks from side to side. Uh, in terms of depth, it's kind of going to be modular, so it doesn't really mean anything. So I had to go for three rows of lamps. I'm using, of course, the inverted lamps, because this is uh, how they're always turned on. So on every side here, I'm going to have all the tanks which I'm going to use. Uh, let's start setting up the possibility of the tanks. So, um, going to a lot of those valves. I don't think... Uh, did I cr add the recipe to create valves? No, I didn't. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to use a lot of valves, a ton of them, which use the engineering bricks, buckets, and iron bars. I think I've got bars and buckets already uh, implemented. So let's just add some engineering bricks and add it all together. Let's get some bars, uh, let's get uh, a bucket, some buckets, and for the engineering brick, I think I can go for any color I want, which simply requires stone bricks, redstone, and some zycoridite. So let's go for the one which I have most of, I have most green zycoridite, so let's go for green. Uh, I don't know why there is such a large difference between... Well, I did just use a lot of light circle, so maybe that's that. But, for example, why do I have so mu some, such a large difference between dark and green? I don't know. Good question. Anyway, uh, green zycordite. I'm going to need some, some sort of stone bricks. I th don't think I have the recipe implemented as well, so let's do that. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and implement the entire thing off-screen, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to create the auto-crafting recipe for the green engineering brick. Now, obviously, I'm creating the green engineering brick, but since uh, the valve recipe is modular in that, that you can see that those items change because it really doesn't make any difference uh, on purpose. This is how Sorin made that. Um, this is... I'm simply going to go for green again, as I've said, because this is what I have most of. I probably should get myself some engineering bricks because I'm going to need them. Okay... So, uh, there they go in the corners, bars on the sides, and what goes in the middle? A bucket. Gives me the valve block. I'm gonna place it here. 
And for the actual creation of tanks, I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use uh, smooth stone and glass to simply create them, and of course the valves themselves. This is kind of unavoidable, unavoidable. You're, going, you're going to need valves, there is no way around it. Um, I will want also to cre actually create uh, an access point, uh, a terminal, uh, in that small new warehouse that I've made. So I'm going to go ahead and actually make a new terminal off screen and connect it. And I'm going to be right back. Okay, so the design I'm looking for uh, in my warehouse right here will be that from the inside, I'm going to be able to look at all the different tanks and be able to interface with, interface with them. But on the outside, things might be looking ugly, like there may be tesseracts here or small uh, machines doing their jobs, or I don't know what, but from the inside, it's going to look very clean. So the way it looks right now probably is going to change. There may be some broken blocks out here. I may uh, just make this wall a little bit larger, so there will be kind of hollow holes in between the walls, uh, so I can... Uh, place all my different machinery, but overall this is the design I'm going to look for. Uh, on the entrance, I want to have my access terminal, so I'm going to have it right here, and also potentially room for some other things, and then I'm going to start actually placing the tanks. So the tanks are going to be uh, kind of one layer into the ground. I'm going to make them 4x4x4, four by four by four. so there is basically 8 blocks of liquid in within. Uh, and something I'm le I've learned from making my uh, genetic liquid, genetic material tank, all the edges have to be made from solid material. So this is why I'm using stone. Okay. This. This. And here. And this can be glass. It can be whatever, but I'm going to make it glass so it uh, can, can be visually uh, seen. Okay, and finally the valve, let's say uh, in the bottom right corner, let's actually connect my applied logistics network, so I brought some cables, and I'm going to connect it to that access point, now I don't want to force too many updates, so let's do uh, this, break this, and I'll build the rest. Okay, so again, as you can see, I'm going to place it over ground, nothing too fancy. And let's do this. Hmm. Yeah, let's go into the ground. Okay, so just about to complete it, connect it here. So that will be now part of the network and finally also complete this is here this here and if you don't if you don't exactly understand what did I do here every time you place a block uh, in addition to the existing applied logistics network it causes the entire network to reset itself so what I did is simply place the entire line and only finally then uh, connect it uh, let's fill up this empty place right here so it looks a little bit more natural so I'm gonna use sand to do that even though I think yeah I don't have enough Okay, not too bad. So now I have an Enderman in my warehouse. Which will now decide to annoy me. Okay. So now I have access to my Applied Energistic Network right here. And that annoying noise. So I can go ahead and actually create a valve. Let's create uh, four because that's the minimum amount. So I can place it right here. Right click it and I have my first tank, which of course can store uh, 128 buckets of liquid. But since it's going to be functional, but it's going to be kind of, you know, you're not supposed to be able to store crazy amounts. You're just something reasonable. Okay, now something I want to try, I don't really know if I can uh, use the same wall for the same tank. I'm pretty sure I can't, but I'm also not sure if I can... Uh, place them right next to each other and I want to try. I want to try it right now before continuing any further so I can know how ca how compact can I place everything together. So if I place it like so, create the same shape, 
again, but they're going to be touching each other. Doesn't seem to f cause any problems uh, with this updating, so this is fine at the moment. This is still the same tank. Let's get some more stone. Um, and then, again, fill up the rest with glass. Okay, and again, bottom left corner, valve. Okay, so there is no problem. Every tank is its own, and even if I can use the same wall, say if I even, even if I can use the same wall right here for both tanks, although I'm pretty sure I can't. No, what I'm even 100% sure I can because I can see, you can visually see how it looks and everything. I would logically be wrong because if you break a block, you kind of take away two two tanks at the same time. So it's kind of a little bit stupid. Anyway, so that's my tank formation. And yeah, it's going to be simply two rows, one next to this wall, the other next to that wall. And again, if I need any some sort or any sort of interaction, such as uh, teleporting the liquid in from Tesseract or whatever, I can is either use the top with placing another valve and use the top or use the back port uh, right here. All right, so that was that. Uh, I'm going to continue with this small project in the next episode, uh, which will include basically building a lot more of those tanks. Pretty, pretty much sure I'm going to do this off screen and starting to actually take a look at all those liquids. And again, if I uh, come here to my uh, liquid transposer, you'll be able to see that the amount of liquids available <laughs> is kind of crazy. So this potentially may be a very long project. Obviously, some of those things I can nail right now. Like, I can get uh, lava and water right away without any problems. I got their own, they got their own ender tanks network available, but all this fuel, oil, crushed ice, which I have no idea how to get, uh, I, have no, I have no idea what acid is as well. Uh, this will take a little bit of time. But until then, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.